Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Talk. Fans, Real Talk well, Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the cats. One of the other issues that's going on right now in football, Colin Kaepernick started to let the torch, the whole kneeling during the during the anthem. Um, what did you think about it when when he first did it and to where it's at right now? I mean, I think it was initially to bring awareness, using your, utilizing your platform, uh, more importantly for communities of people who have reached out for decades now uh, about these type of situations and issues and going unheard, and him seeing an opportunity to utilize his platform and the viewership within that to, to make a statement to, to speak up for the little guy at mm -hmm. the end of the day, you know? And some of these guys in the locker rooms, they're affected Personally, it is their sister or their brother that are going through some of these situations who lose their life in, in these aspects. So it's not it's like a uh, not like a it's you know third party and they're representing someone else. Like this is close to home and we're we're tight knit brotherhood to where it's like if my brother is going through something to where I'm gonna care and empathize within this situation. You know, you have a bunch of guys that are black, white, you know, Asian, whatever the case may be, coming together w w within that. You know, within the the locker room and stuff like that, having each other's backs and stuff. So um, I think. The, the point of making that, uh, bringing attention and awareness to it, you know, I think that happened and I think they were able to uh, pay the respects to the, the, the vets like everyone wanted within that situation. Yeah. And he got the idea from a military vet. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. so it was somebody that was, wasn't a vet who gave him the idea to be respectful of taking the knee. Yeah. And that's what, you know, fans don't even see that aspect, you know, because they want to create it to the situation for whatever the case they want, you know. Yeah. But it, he went through... He, he did it the one way of actually, you know, uh, sitting down, being more disrespectful within that, and he reached yeah. out to, to, to fix that problem. And yeah. he did it in a respectful way of taking the knee in, within, that, in that, within that aspect. The knee in some ways is more respectful than standing. Because you go to church, kneeling, you know, praying, respect, yeah. you know, yeah. even an injury, players get down on one knee, or when you speak to your coach, huddling up, you'd get down on one, one knee. knee. So it's not disrespectful to be on one knee. So I mean, then at that point, you, if we're really nitpicking, I mean, you have got yeah, people that are all over the place that aren't even taking knees. They're standing around, walking, taking pictures, talking, yeah. doing yeah. whatever the case is. So, I mean, if you're holding everyone accountable, hold these people accountable too. Don't pick out someone who's uh, doing something that's uh, trying to bring attention or awareness or whatever the case may be. If we're holding everyone accountable, then hold everyone accountable. Let's not hold this guy accountable and not hold person that we think that's in a higher regard than everyone else. Yeah. We're all people, we're all the same. The, the, the second part of Tripp's question, though, is what it evolved to now in this huge, is this person, who, who's standing, who's sitting beforehand, and, you know, what do you think as far as what it evolved to now? I mean, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I know Malcolm Jenkins has been one of the, the forerunners and leaders with the liaison between the player rep and with the owners and stuff like that. I know they've been in talks and, and compromised, but I'm not sure previous to those details as far as the actions taking step forward. I think that's just more of a awareness to where uh, it needs to be looked at from a, a governmental standpoint. You know, cities, you know, governing the, their, you know, uh, police force and holding them accountable. Because mm -hmm. the whole thing's about accountability now, you know, that's what we're talking about. So it's, you know, something has to happen within that structure to, to where you have guys that are just able to, to, to jump into this uh, service that we put in such high regard mm -hmm. with minimal training, you know. And knowing that, you know, that they're going to be put in hostile situations. How can you handle a hostile situation if you've never grow, put, been in a hostile situation, mm -hmm. you know, or you're patrolling a a very underpoverished uh, socioeconomic area yeah. and what goes on in that situation if you've never been there and experienced that situation you're going in there walking on eggshells because you don't know the the landscape of where you're going you know so there's a lot of different things that could be done to to help that situation on both sides you know uh, it just again just comes back down to accountability as far as like because I mean, you did mention like the, the government and and all of that um, you know, we've seen uh, the president, he had a few issues with the NFL this season. He called them, you know, sons of bees and, yeah. and whatnot. And, you know, as, as a result, we saw the Golden State decided not to go to, to the White House for the visit. And now we already saw a lot of Chris Long, yeah. Malcolm Jenkins, Tory Smith said they weren't going. They said it was a couple of more. Uh, would, you, would you have gone? Because I know, because, I mean, 
you was a different uh, president in office yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you went. Yeah. What would you have gone to to the White House if if your teammates weren't going, or like, what would you do in that situation? Oh man, it's a uh, it's it's an interesting situation. You know, it's a uh, it's the whole the whole aspect of what the country has become has been is kind of interesting. You know. Uh, we've opened up the floodgates to allow anyone be become president, you know, and, and be the most disrespectful within that space. And uh, we don't we don't really care at that point, you know. So yeah. then it's like, why do we care about these NFL players taking a knee if we don't even care about the person who's in who's in charge at that point, you know? So I mean, at the end of the day, we we need to all as individuals just figure out that aspect of what we want and what what it means to us and what we stand for at the end of the day, you know. And as far as going to the the presidency, if, if if I was part of the team, yeah, I don't, I don't know. You know, I think uh, you had a little more swag in the office when you went there. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My yeah. main man Obama was <laughs> up in there, so you know, I mean, uh, just being at the White House was was a great experience anyway. You know, and if it's something to where uh, if the guys aren't going to go during that time because of who's who's in office and stuff like that, they should still take the time to try to get back in into the, the White House mm -hmm. and, and see that aspect, you know, because of just what it stands for, you know, being being American and stuff like that. And uh, just that process of all the, all the, the world champions that, that play in professional sports in America have gone through that space, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, just if, if half the team was gone, the other half wasn't. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I go see Trump. Let's see what he's talking about, man. Uh -huh. He's talking his nonsense, you know. I mean, at that point, it's pre trip, so. <laughs> I, I, forgot who, I forgot who it was. DC, that. nice spot, though. So. I, I know Charles Barkley says it's an honor to just be in the White House, no matter who the president is. And uh, I, I, I don't know if it was him or someone else also added that it would be good to for them to actually talk to the president and voice their issues and, you know, to get a different understanding, you know. Of, you know, behind the scenes, what really goes on instead of, you know, the cutted, the selective things that we, we hear or, you know, out there in the media and everything. But. Yeah, I mean, it would be a great, it would be a great opportunity, especially talking about Malcolm Jenkins being that guy that's leading that forefront and he, he just won the Super Bowl, yeah. you know, and being able to maybe be yeah. that voice of reason and be talk on the behalf of the people and stuff like that, you know, they, I mean, they could you know, have a conversation. He, he's that's also one that's of those guys that about, yeah. just called And there the is a microphone right there yeah. on yeah. set. <laughs> you, could bring the, you could go and bring the topics up right I'm, there. I'm, the I'm, sure, he wouldn't, I'm sure he wouldn't address him yeah. at that moment. Uh, just to circle back real quick, you played against Cap. Uh, during his his best statistical seasons, yep. is he good enough? Should he be a starting quarterback right now? And do you feel he'll get another opportunity? Uh, I mean, can, he can play in this league for sure. You know, I mean, just the, I mean, he t he took the, the Niners to the you know three consecutive you know NFC championships and then to the Super Bowl. You know, yeah. I mean, you have I mean, Grant they, they have great defenses, but I mean, he, his he still was averaging with twenty five points a game or something like that, yeah. you know? So, I mean, he was putting up points and being able to, to rely on that defense as well. I mean, he for sure can play in this league, you know? Um, there's some quarterbacks that had some very subpar years, you know, <laughs> and he uh, could easily have been a backup and had that opportunity to help a team out, you know? But, again, there's that political aspect and stuff like that to where um, – that's yeah, business, <laughs> you know? I Do mean, you feel yeah. that now with, with some time that has gone by that he'll get that shot, though? I mean, I've I seen something that Goodell said that uh, it's up to the discretion of the owners to let him back. So, I mean, if he's saying that, then that means that was one of those things where they <laughs> have someone to hush-hush of not yeah. getting back in. If that's if he's saying that. So, I mean, if a team was looking for that opportunity to have a, a, a quarterback that's been there, even from a backup standpoint, I think there's, there's 32 teams out there, and I think he can get on one of those at least. Yeah, he definitely deserves to be at least a backup. Do you think he's good enough to be a starter, though? I mean, for, uh I mean, he's gonna have to compete. You can't just give yeah. anybody. Yeah, he has he has to go out there and compete. You know, I mean, even if I was owner, I would uh would have him go out there and compete for the job, and not just yeah. be able to give him a job. You know, so um, I mean, that goes for all quarterbacks. You know, at that point, you know, some quarterbacks out there get complacent. They feel like they're gonna be out here and, and throw the game away. I mean, yeah. <clears throat> my man's uh, did it a little bit at the at the at the game and stuff, but. Um, yeah, I think he could, he could play though for sure. Talk.com, where Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the cats.